Hey, what's up everyone? Back here in the garden, and it is day 64 of the Gorilla Glue number four run. So we are fully through nine weeks, um, and you know, on to week 10 here. And from everything the plants are telling me, from trichomes to uh, flowering, you know, recommended flowering time, as well as uh, swollen calyxes and receded hairs, or uh, pistils, it's time. And uh, no doubt about it, like I said, everything, everything is pointing to they are not just in their window, but well within their window. Uh, trichomes are very, very cloudy all throughout. Very few clear left at all, um, but also very few amber. So, uh, very nice even trichome development across uh, the colas and the plant, which is nice to see. You know, you don't have to wait too long for, uh, even though I will be harvesting in stages, and the blowers will get a day or two, just a couple days, not very much. But, uh, you know, every little bit helps. It's not as necessary as far as um, THC development and should be terpenes as well as far as throughout the whole the whole bag of bud not just the top colas so you know we're at we're day 64 it's it's done it's kind of tough not tough but it's just a bummer um as much fun as harvest is you get to take your plants down and see what they yield all that kind of stuff you're also taking down your plants you just spent two and a half three months growing um so it's a little bit sad but it's also fun to see the plants just in their fullest potential Check out this soil girl. This is the one soil glue. Just pretty. A nice big thick top. She's got some, some flop and some wobble to her when you shake her around. Real nice. Um, the Apaches are just unbelievable. You know, between the Apache, I call it the Apache effect, the color. You know, notice the color on the Apache canopy. It is not present over in the 4K. It's not really present under the 3K. It is present under the 3K, but mostly under the more share the shared plant and it's really just more faded you don't actually see that much color over here um, as opposed to the purples and autumn reds you see in the back so you know definitely some difference in spectrums I do notice a little different de the Apache is similar to the 4k in bud size and development um, but the 3k definitely took a little bit of different shape a little more rounded uh, you know when you look at the cocos the soils are a little more look like the hydros under the other spectrum, but as far as the 3K, notice it's more rounded crowns. Uh, I see that, it's a little more rounder, a little rounder, and the dream is totally different strain, um, a little rounder, more knuckle, more fist-like, as where you go to the Apaches, and we got the Apaches probably have the most amount of fox tailing, um, they also started fading the earliest, but they also have the most intensity as far as Maybe not over the whole canopy, but direct center intensity, which is why I think they get the fade earlier. They're pushing, uh, at least in the center of the canopy, photosynthesizing a little harder. Um, come to the 4K, got mild fox tailing, not quite as much as the, uh, the Apache, a little more round, but not quite to the 3K. The fade isn't really there. You can see there's a little bit of a purple fade on this one. And, you know, in this main coil, you can see purple hues, but nowhere near the effects of uh, the Apaches as far as color but development wise just as good maybe even a hair better um, one nice thing about the, the super panel is the coverage you know I didn't put any additional light up we did end up just riding it out as is a couple LEDs over the uh, 4x8 no more additions and the coverage was good I mean we're looking Apache buds out here are looking good but I think the 4k the big super panel really held its own on the uh, on the coverage you know that's five full five by five coverage only pulling 648 watts and that's with drivers fans everything um, so really impressive I, I definitely love what the cod panel did and look forward to seeing you know more of that technology progressing um, so you know what made this there's a lot of new things I did here in the grow from medium you know I've always been a soil grower especially as long as you guys have been watching me I've d dabbled in pseudo synthetics we'll call them or pseudo organics however you want to look at it half full or half empty kind of guy um, but I went pure cocoa with not just a synthetic but a salt I went with pure salts Jack's hydroponic um, with cal, cal nitrate and Epsom salt added and literally mixed them by weight per gallon and uh, honestly guys got 
the best results I've had in a long, long time um, without any additional work. It was so simple. Uh, the plants got everything they needed and produced at their fullest. You know, I can't imagine any real bud boosters or anything I would add that I, that I would say, yes, I need to add that to make this more successful. There's nothing that jumps out at me. Um, I might mess with Moab or a couple little boosters here and there next round or something. But uh, I do know just pure base nutrients. Look at this, just awesome. Um, so between the cocoa, the nutrients, and then also the addition that I, I've gone into in depth a few times is the Blummet auto watering system. These things were clutch. Uh, definitely a big key to my grow. Um, being three rows deep, it's a bitch to get back there and hand water. Yeah, with a wand, it's not too bad, but I literally hand water with a bucket um, when I do. So that was really nice. Not only that, but I had a nine day vacation in this run. And as you can see, the plants are perfect. And they stayed watered the whole time. I did have someone fill up the bucket, but other than that, didn't have to do anything. And that was the big, big, big key. Uh, so just, just awesome. You know, the run went really, really well. I, I'm gonna get it tested and see exactly how well it went. Will we break into the 30% club? I don't want to jinx myself in any way, but I really think we do. We will. I've seen a lot of results coming in over 30%. Um, you know, all really good growers. You can't just chump it around and get into the 30 club. But if you grow it right and you grow it, you know, at least to 90% of its potential, you have a chance to get in the 30% club. And that is something I would really like to do. And uh, I believe it's possible just looking at, looking at this. I don't think I've ever had a strain that quite makes made me smile and giggle at the amount of resin it produces so much. It's it's pretty stupid, really. Uh, I was talking to some old timers about it, and 30% is just unreal, guys. Uh, that's like saying, sorry, my THC has a little bit of weed in it still. It's fucking, that's really high. I remember, you know, when I first started growing, getting to 18 was a huge deal. Uh, and then 21, 22 was a little more average when the OGs truly stepped in and took their foothold but uh, anything over 21 22 is still good these days but this is just unreal potential coming out and you know it's gonna keep I don't know what the potential of cannabis entirely is but it's awesome to see these 25 plus percent strains more on the regular and uh, now 30 percent plus so I also saw um, saw some Instagram of a different strain that hit 34.8 percent uh, by obsolete um it's called blue dot anyway um different story who knows so really cool potential as far as cannabis and then what took these plants to the to their fullest potential i believe is and i kind of touched on all these already with the spectrums at least is the lights i'm using um i hope when people look at these grows they don't go oh that's a great grow for an led i, I don't want to hear that because i know it's i know it's a fucking great grow for an led but the point is, it's a great grow for anything. It doesn't matter whether it's LED or HPS, ceramic metal halide, uh, induction, doesn't matter. The fact is, uh, I'm gonna at least toot my own horn here. It was a great grow, great results no matter what the lighting. And the reason for that is because I'm using the best LEDs in the business, period. I can make them to any design I want to fit my grow situation absolutely perfectly. And not only that, but they're literally the best components built in the world. The Cree chips I'm using, um, at least in this, they literally like a month ago just came out with new ones, uh, but they're the same thing and I will be upgrading to them. But for the sense of, for sake of conversation, you know, these are the most efficient, highest output chip on the market in the way that I run them. I don't run them at the recommended current, I run them significantly lower, but still enough where the efficiency and output meet the price and it's it's manageable and I'm, uh, you know, it's a little cheaper for me to build than a production panel and uh, I'm still getting the savings, 650 watts that pretty much, for me running a 650 watt panel in place of a, a, a thousand watt HPS, that saves me around $960 a year. Um, plus a bulb change once a year, maybe twice a year, who knows what your style is. Uh, and that's without AC. You know, you throw in AC, and I'm in the, I'm in the thousands of dollars a year, real quick. I pay a shit ton for electricity, so my payback is a lot uh, quicker than uh, than many people who are paying like six, eight cents. 
Um, but that is why I run these, between my small room and the fact that I can get the power of a thousand water in here um, and save that kind of money. Win-win, guys. Um, whether you're DIYing or Apaches, everyone kind of gives me shit about the Apache because before I was DIYing, I've always been Apache. And the reason I am is because companies won't commit to putting the tech like the top of the line. And when Apache came out, there was no COBS. And the few COBS that were out were not at the level that the CXA, CXBs, and Vero 29s are at nowadays. Just wasn't there. What was around were Cree XTEs, the Chias, uh, like 119, 219s, like here. And then um, some Osrams, but really no white Osram panels. And still to this day, it's really not their forte. Um, anyway, so best the best lighting available in a production panel. And like I said, I'm saving $1,000 a year. So for me to use the coupon, get this for, you know, 2K, 18, whatever. 2K is what everyone gets them for. Um, but it, like, $967 a year is what it, it comes out to on the exact, you know, 36 cents a kilowatt thing. Um, but my payback's instantly. It's one harvest and I'm paid back if we want to talk that way. But if we're going to wait for it to save itself up in lighting electricity, it's a year and I'm already at the cost of a full price Gavita. Um, and then a little after that, and I've been running this for almost three years now, I'm in the green, guys. Um, which means I can upgrade, I can do whatever, and I've already broke even or made money. Um, and, and that's important. I've actually made money on my two and a half mark here already. So very very important you know so don't don't be afraid if it's a truly good panel um, you know I just because it's a high price tag doesn't make it a high panel and, and like I said everything has the best components that is the reason they're so good it's not the spectrum so you can see little differences in spectrums in photo photomorphous genesis what it's called and it basically means light dictated development um, based on color and whatnot but spectrum means pretty much jack diddly Plants like photons, and they don't care what fucking color they are. Red, blue, and those chlorophyll peaks that everyone... Oh, sorry. Everyone sees and says, oh yeah, it hits 660, it hits whatever, it's, it's super efficient. That is not what plants use. You guys want to see what plants use? This is the lighting spectrum that plants use. And that's your relative intent... Your, relative intensity normalized to one but really it's actually like without normalizing it's about 89 to 91 percent the peak there so it's actually very very efficient and the green and the yellow that is supposedly unusable is super usable guys um, and in many cases based on which exact species you're talking about many times yellow green or green exactly is more useful than blue itself um, but you know as always reds really driving photosynthesis the hardest and not really red actually it's yellow 500 to 628 is the most efficiently used light by plants. 660 is not, it's less efficient. But what 660 has is certain morphological effects um, that what we know as seem to influence flower size, as well as stretching and some other stuff that's uh, you know, continually being studied and you know, some say it's myths, some say it's whatever, but it's there. Um, so anyway, this is what plants use. They don't care really what color it is. They'd like an ideal balanced full spectrum so that you're not oversaturating anything. But what they really care about is the photon output. And that's what my LEDs and any LED I support, that's the reason I support certain LEDs is because they can put out output that'll match a thousand watt or match the sun or somewhere within, well within the plant's requirements. And uh, that, that's where it really comes in, because you're not just making a light, you're not just growing plants. You're doing two in a symbiotic relationship, in a sense. So you want to make a light that really treats the plants well, and that's, that's what these do, white phosphorus in general, because we have pure whites, white phosphorus with a little red enhancements, and a little warmer pure white. And it's the whites that are really driving the, uh, the success of the, uh, the light and the grow itself. So, you know, a lot of people ask about LEDs, this and that. 90% of the LEDs, 98% of the LEDs people ask me about are dog shit. And HPS will wipe the floor with them. Um, so, 
you know, there's there's ways to know, and it's it's hard to know. I, I'm sorry, I'm babbling about this, but it, it's really a really in-depth topic. Um, and if you don't know what to look for, you're probably going to get scammed by marketing, and that, that just sucks. It's a shitty name for LEDs, but it is what it is. But if you're really educated, and know what your plants want, and are determined enough to make sure that whatever you're buying will supply you the information of the output in micromoles, not lumens. I can work with lumens and I can make some good calculations with them, but nothing is as good as micromoles. And that's because plants, like I said, they directly use photons, micromoles is a way of measuring that. And you're pretty much looking at eight to 10 photons per carbon molecule fixated or assimilated. Um, and so when, when you think of it like that, you need the quanta or the amount of photons. And it just gets into a little more science than is necessary in a general update video. But long story short, that is the reason why my LEDs, not every LED, the ones that I'm using, my DIY, Apache Tech, and again, my other DIY, um, are successful, AT600. So that's about it for the lights. But I really did just want to get, show you guys this harvest. I uh, hope you got to see some nice flowers and whatnot while I was babbling on around there. Um, and stay tuned for the next grows, you know. I'm trying to get more cuts of the glue so I can just run it again. Um, I, I'm sorry for all the glue posts on Instagram. Uh, it's just a bunch of flower shots after flower shots. I try to mix it up and get more buds, not post the same buds. Uh, but get used to it because the glue is a fucking awesome strain. And uh, I'll wait to make cuts of my own if I got to to run it. That's how good it is. Um, so, anyway, thanks for watching. Anyone new, subscribe, like, do all that good jazz. Uh, everyone who's following me, thank you very much. I do appreciate it. Um, it's been growing more and more. And I just hope you guys like what's on the channel and what I'm doing. Um, so, like, subscribe, and thank you very much. Peace out from In the Garden with the Glue.